I said about it as well, I didn't believe anything they said. But then everyone was saying, yeah, it started in Birmingham and now it's in London and stuff like that. Well, they were saying it was like a monster creature, he gave me like eating human, human people, he gave me human beings. There's a bit of hype about it, um, that they're going to come up from nowhere and just start biting you. That camera, man. Listen, you know, nah, man. You know, bruv, you heard about them people who talk about that. Yeah, dumb but it's just it's for almost five years, residents in the East End have been haunted by a strange urban legend that refuses to go away. The legend tells of mysterious creatures roaming the dark pastures of local estates after dark, savagely attacking lone victims and drinking their blood. As ridiculous as it may sound, people living here have been genuinely affected by these rumours, their fear fueled by several articles appearing in national newspapers and news media. But are there really vampires roaming our inner cities? Or is there an even more dangerous predator out there? Mile End. And in this community in particular, you don't have to go very far to hear a vampire story. I've heard the newspapers and that, and people around Poplar, I think it was Bird Day, Mile End. These places, there was people just bite, taking bites out of someone. Some were saying they like, look like a wolf, some were saying they look like a uh, fox. It affected me because, like, obviously, there's something out there, it Biting you. And, like, it crawls up. You don't know what to believe. Do you get There's like a dog, turns into a dog. So imagine you see a normal black dog, that like, you think, oh, is that him? While the community continues to live in fear and unconfirmed reports of attacks fill the newspapers, some think that there is a simpler explanation. Lindsay Knight, an anthropological filmmaker working in Tower Hamlets, is one of a number of experts that think the stories point to the re-emergence of an ancient danger not seen in our streets for hundreds of years. Well, we know from the work of anthropologists like Juan Gomez Alonso that the vampire myth has always been connected with the spread of rabies. For example, the modern kind of depiction of vampires can be tracked back to an 18th century epidemic of rabies in Eastern Europe. And so, you know, a lot of the old movies and things like that that you see, you know, the, these kind of myths and the Dracula myth, they've been, you know, influenced directly by the particular effect that rabies has on a human community, as experienced by medieval communities in particular. Put very simply, the things you connect with vampires, you know, this blood in the teeth, um, biting, uh, this kind of frenzied attack, these are all symptomatic of the behaviour of infected organisms in the latter stages of rabies. You know, someone has been attacked by a rabid animal on the streets and it's happened so quickly you know in, in this kind of blurry figure in the dark and they've come away believing that they've been attacked by a vampire when it's most likely to have simply been a rabid dog or fox. But if this emerging vampire myth is indeed simply a sign that rabies is back on the streets of the UK then what is carrying it and more importantly where's the evidence? James Mulder is a mammologist based in London. He believes that the answer can be found in a series of newspaper reports published around the time that the vampire myths appeared. In March 2005, the Daily Telegraph ran a story of a fox killing an Alsatian in broad daylight. This completely baffled wildlife experts. The BBC and several other newspapers shortly after that ran a story about a fox trying to snatch a baby, Lewis Day, leaving it with serious facial injuries. And later in the same year even, a girl of four years old was attacked while sleeping in her own bed. Um, all of this shows that foxes have been behaving very aggressively and um, in a very abnormal way. Trevor Williams, the director of the Fox Project in Turnbridge Wells, insists that this attack on baby Lewis could have only been the result of a brain-damaged animal. Shorthand for rabies. The disease makes the animals very aggressive and very violent, and it can be very easily transmitted to human beings by bites or scratches. But once a human being is infected and starts showing symptoms, it is fatal. Some were saying they like, look like a wolf, some were saying they look like a uh, fox. In the UK, foxes have long been considered a threat to farming, but these new attacks are unprecedented in their boldness and destructive violence, turning this normally shy and timid species into a predatory killer. 
But with nearly 100 years separating this outbreak and the last recorded case of rabies in the UK, why has this happened now? And where did it come from? I saw this fox attacking. <laughs> Just over three years ago, a little-known scientific journal in the United States published a peer-reviewed paper that reported a new strain of super rabies spreading through a community of skunks in Arizona. By 2009, National Geographic were reporting that the same strain had been passed and was spreading rapidly through the East Coast fox population. This new form of rabies is transmitted much more easily than the known forms, passing from fox to fox um, in, in the same way as a common flu. The flu-like spread of the super rabies strain has changed the way in which rabies is transmitted throughout a population, and there is evidence that it has rendered the UK's defence against the disease useless. This Northern Ireland memorandum on rabies was published in the wake of the first attacks. You might ask yourself why a country that hasn't seen a reported case of rabies since 1908 would suddenly be spending large amounts of taxpayers' money researching its prevention and control. And here, on page 6, the report tells us that the foxes are the main host of the disease. Is this proof that the government are aware that super rabies has already arrived in the UK and of an epidemic in the fox population? And if so, why aren't they warning the general public? You know, it doesn't take a genius to figure out why the government aren't telling us about the threat. It's no secret that there is currently a worldwide shortage of rabies vaccine and the demand for it has pushed prices through the roof. It would be more than our NHS can bear and a nationwide vaccination program would absolutely bankrupt um, the already stretched health system and, and it'll bring it crashing down. In the context of the current global economic crisis, it would seem that this is too much of a price for the government to pay and the reason why there's evidence of a conspiracy to cover it up. But ignoring it won't make the problem go away. And if they are not going to do anything about it, then we have no choice but to act. If the experts are right, then super rabies spread freely by a fox population exploded in the wake of the 2005 ban on hunting, could constitute the UK's single biggest health crisis since the Great Plague of the 17th century. The question is, what are we going to do about it? If the rabies that we're seeing in London is being carried, as the evidence suggests, by foxes, you know, we need to act. The communities in the past that have dealt with rabies, the communities that have acted quickly to cull the population of infected carriers, generally, have emerged successfully. Um, you know, the danger for us in the UK is if we don't act quickly, the consequences could be dire.